We're only halfway through the year and Qualcomm are already preparing to launch the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 Plus chipset, which will supposedly boost GPU performance. That being said, the vanilla Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 CPU has continued to dominate benchmarks in 2022, which is why I've decided to test out five of the best Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 powered smartphones in three different benchmark runs where we will test out battery drain, heat dissipation, throttling scores and frames per second. All five devices have been updated to their latest available software updates. And of course, all five devices house the four nanometer run Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 chipset with a max core clock speed of three gigahertz. All devices are kitted with 12 gigs of LPDDR5 RAM and UFS 3.1 storage. And all of them are rocking WQHD plus displays with the Vivo being absolutely enormous. But the Vivo is the only phone here to sport LTPO 1.0 technology as opposed to the rest of the devices LTPO 2.0 technology. I've I've also set each device to their respective high performance mode and the first benchmark that we'll be running through today is Antutu version 9.3.8. After that we'll be testing out CPU single and multi-core performance in Geekbench version 5.4.4 and ending things off we'll be running through 3 Mark Wildlife in order to test GPU performance. I'm extremely excited to get things going, this is Technic and without further ado, let's go! First and foremost, we will be checking out the battery percentage at the start of the test, and we'll compare this at the end of the test for milliamp hour per minute readings. And then we're gonna be testing out heat dissipation. So at the start of the test, checking out the heat in terms of degrees Celsius, room temperature around 20 degrees Celsius. We're checking this right now. They have all been idle for a couple of hours and I will recheck the temperature after each interval at the end of each benchmark that we run through. Kickstarting things off here with Antutu version 9.3.8. And for those of you who don't know, Antutu version nine, which kickstarted pretty much at the start, close to the end of 2021, start of 2022, has changed, but only ever so slightly from version eight. Version 9 now has this new Swordsman GPU render that you can see at the start of the video. After that, we have the Refinery, which is the little alien bobbing its head around, which has not changed from version 8. After that, we have the Terracotta Soldiers, which is pretty cool, my favorite part, and that is also unchanged from version 8. And then they have also added more user experience testing, that being added video CTS and added video decoding. So, of course, results aren't exactly the same as version 8. They are actually going to be quite a bit higher than version 8. Version 9 has been around for quite a while now, so I'm sure most of you already know this. But version 9 with the increased score is because they have been more optimized, the software that is Antutu, for the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 and all 4 nanometer fabricated chipsets in order to work in harmony together. And that is why we get such buttery smooth frames across the board in Antutu. As you can see over here, all of them look absolutely phenomenal. And I remember with older Snapdragon chipsets, that being the 865 or 865 Plus, you would see a lot of jitteriness and most of the time frames would sit at around 15 FPS. They're sitting at almost double that now, which is fantastic. Chipsets really have come a long way, but there aren't really many games or apps out there that can actually push these GPUs for the task that they do. That's why you see in so many launch events that they speak about how the new chipsets can actually improve the processing speed and end results of actual photos and videos taken on the device because cameras are such a big thing when it comes to smartphones. So they're trying to integrate the CPU within the cameras now to produce better end result photos and videos. So I guess that's what most people are going for these days. But if you wanna see raw specs benchmarks is still where you have to come to in terms of seeing which one is going to do better than the other one and after running through Antutu version 9 over here the Samsung actually added the least in degrees Celsius only adding 16.5 degrees in Celsius whereas the Xiaomi 12 Pro added a whopping 21 degrees Celsius after our first benchmark here which is absolutely insane. Moving on to Geekbench version 5 over here and at the end when we get to results we'll be comparing the single core and multi-core benchmark scores between all the devices and after Geekbench the Samsung added 2.4 but the least added was actually the OnePlus 10 Pro only adding 1.1 and the most this time around was the Vivo X Note adding a little bit higher than the rest of the devices at 2.9 degrees in Celsius and the Vivo has actually stayed the coolest in terms of start after Antutu and after Geekbench whereas the OnePlus and the Xiaomi have pretty much been the hottest but the OnePlus added the least in terms of temperature gain after that Geekbench run over here now testing out a 3D Mark Wildlife now this is 
focusing fully on GPU. This is where things are apparently going to improve with the new boosted overclock chipset, that being the 8th Gen 1 Plus, which we should see apparently in a week or two if rumors are correct. But I think GPU performance is where the regular Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 truly shines, especially over the competition, that being Apple's A15 Bionic chip, which actually does a insanely good job with GPU performance, but even better than the Dimensity. But today we're here to check out just Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 powered smartphones. And these are some of the best that I've ever tested. So I thought I'd throw them all in together. And after our last benchmark, that being 3D Mark Wildlife, the Samsung ended off the coolest over here and added the least, only 0.1, whereas the OnePlus 10 Pro ended off the hottest and added the most after that last bench. And when it comes to overall temperature gain, the OnePlus 10 Pro added the most, once again, adding 26.2 degrees in Celsius compared to the S22 Ultra's addition of only 19 degrees in Celsius, with the Samsung ending off the coolest and the OnePlus ending off the hottest, pretty much 10 degrees hotter than that of the Samsung. But when it comes to battery drain, the Xiaomi 12 Pro did the worst over here, draining by 11%, with a crazy milliamp hour per minute drainage of 28.1 milliamp hours per minute, which was of course beaten by the rest of the phones over here, since they have much bigger batteries at 5,000 milliamps, but the Samsung takes the crown over here, only draining by 8%, with a reading of 22.2 milliamp hours per minute drain. But when it comes to scores, the Vivo takes the crown of Antutu version 9, with a whopping 1,016,161 points. Second place not too far off that is the Xiaomi 12 Pro, the two phones that actually drained the most since they pushed their CPUs and GPUs to the max. Now when it comes to single core in Geekbench version 5, once again the Samsung dead last over here with just over a thousand points. In fourth place, we have the Xiaomi with 1,220 points, which is not too far behind third place being the Oppo Find X5 Pro with 1,251 points. And very strange, never had this happen before. Second place, 1252 and first place, 1253, literally going down from first to third place in one digit steps absolutely crazy, but the OnePlus did come out on top of here, but I guess it's much of a muchness between it, the Vivo and the Oppo. But things shuffle up a bit here when it comes to multi-core score. The OnePlus 10 Pro went from first position to fifth position, getting a score of 3,257 points, which was not only beat by its sibling, the Oppo Find X5 Pro, but not by that much, but was also beat by the Samsung Galaxy S22 Ultra, which is known for throttling issues. Second place was the Xiaomi 12 Pro, no surprise over there, with a whopping 3,000 473 points and still keeping its crown on its head is the Vivo X Note with 3,542 points placing first. And once again, things shuffle around pretty much to the exact same placements that we saw with the single core Geekbench results. Fifth place being the Samsung in terms of 3D Mark Wildlife over here. Fourth, the Xiaomi. Third, the Oppo. Second, the Vivo. And first, the OnePlus 10 Pro. Once again, back on top. Super strange over here with a score of 9,659 points, an average FPS of 57 points. 8 FPS on the OnePlus that is, with a minimum FPS of 39 and a maximum of 75. But the Samsung has dipped quite a lot over here, all the way to 6,941 points, with an average FPS of 41.6 and a crazy low minimum FPS of 15 frames per second, which is pretty bad when it comes to a chipset that is known for great GPU performance. And this might very well be because of GOS, the Samsung game optimized service, but I have disabled it over here and it apparently only kicks in when you're playing games and the Samsung still performs day-to-day -day tasks just as well as the rest of the phones over here but it does so by maintaining a higher battery percentage most of the time and better heat dissipation. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below as well as what you hope to see change in Qualcomm's latest Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 Plus CPU. I hope that you guys enjoyed watching this video as much as I did making it. This is Technic and I'll catch you in the next one.